What's going on, guys? Let's give a huge shout out to Editor X for sponsoring this video and let's jump in. Go ahead and click edit site from our dashboard. We have our top navigation, our bar with tools and your page canvas. There are a few things I like doing when I start learning a new tool. The first thing is finding our keyboard shortcuts. We can find that under the help menu, then keyboard shortcuts. Quick shortcut to open it is by simply using command forward slash or control forward slash in Windows. These are split into categories. You have the basics, which are the most common, saving, publishing, and previewing our page. Below that, we have stage interactions. These take care of actions when you select elements in your canvas, like duplicating or moving things above each other. Very similar to PowerPoint. There's also this cool feature called stacking. We'll take a look at that later. If we scroll down a bit further, we see the view shortcuts. The way Editor X works is a bit interesting because we're all used to using the shortcut to zoom in and out of our browsers, right? In any standard site, this helps us read better by scaling everything on the page. But with Editor X, we do that, everything including our tools will scale, which is not ideal, especially if we're working on a high resolution monitor. To fix this, they did something really clever, which is to enable its own canvas zoom controls. To activate this, we can simply click on view zoom in or use the shortcut command plus plus, which will turn this feature on. Once you've activated the canvas zoom controls, you'll notice the little zoom icon in the top right bar. Once it's active, you can use the normal zoom in and out keyboard shortcuts. Trust me, you'll thank me later when you build your next project. Just like our zoom controls, take a good look at these side handles. They let us proportionally scale our canvas. If we drag them all the way inward, we'll start shifting between breakpoints. You'll notice these gray areas, which simply give you a reference of where the breakpoint begins and where it ends. For example, this one starts at 751 pixels and ends at 1000 pixels. Same with the mobile breakpoint, 320 to 750. We'll dive into this topic in later lessons. All right, let's go ahead and click on that plus button on the top left. Just like the keyboard shortcut panel, we have a set of elements that are organized into categories. The quick ads are all those common elements any website usually has. You have the title, paragraph, buttons, images, and video. Now, some of them are, are more complex than others, but let's not worry about that. Adding basic elements into our canvas is pretty simple. Just select it and that's it. Anytime you want to add any of these items into your canvas, simply right click, quick add, and then choose your element. This is going to be the most common thing you'll do while using Editor X. But you know what would be cool though? I'd love to have a search feature like the Apple Command Center, where you just type in and get any element instead of using clicks. But hey, this works just fine. So let's skip that for now and take a look at other categories. Compositions are predefined layouts that serve a common new scenario. For example, we can build out an entire page by simply selecting some of these blocks. These are also organized into categories within categories. When you start adding these compositions into your canvas, you'll notice each one sits within its own block. We'll talk more about them later too. But just a heads up, these compositions typically are your blueprint because they contain grids and flexible layouts that you can reverse engineer to get a sense of how Editor X works. One really cool feature we'll cover is the theme manager or site styles, where we can set global fonts and colors, making it super easy to customize and replace all these compositions that uh, we just inserted. Over here, you'll see empty containers for you to wrap text or images. You have multi-column grids, layouters, which behave like grids, but are easier to use in different breakpoints. These layouters are using the power of flex, which is a nerdy term in the web development world. Repeaters are just like layouters, with the exception that they're specifically used to connect with dynamic data. And finally, there's lightboxes, which behave like separate pages and are triggered by buttons. Let's go ahead and select the light box and add it into our canvas. For example, if I open up the pages, you'll notice the light box appears under its own section called light boxes. 
so we can edit them globally and pull them whenever we need them. That's pretty cool. This panel is where you'll find your sitemap. You can have static pages like the home page or you can create dynamic pages. Let's go ahead and use the plus to add more pages. Notice how in the canvas, both the footer and header came along. Any section that has this green glow are called masters. Think of them as components that can be shared across your site. Any edits that you make in a master will be applied everywhere. So as you can see here, it's pretty straightforward. And the fact that Editor X gives you all these predefined elements is a huge lift when you need to launch something quickly. There's two really cool elements that I love in Editor X. That's the library of shapes and transparent videos. Check this out. I'm gonna select this statue into my canvas. Just by looking at this, there's nothing special. We can right click, add shape, scale it up using these corner nodes, command down to move it behind the statue, and then just click preview. Damn, that's pretty cool. Since shapes in Editor X are editable SVGs, we can even change the color to make them pop. We do that using the inspector panel. Select the shape element, then click on the top right lever or command I to open up the inspector panel. This inspector panel is split into three parts, layout, design, and interactions. Under layout, you'll see these accordion settings for size, position, scroll, adjust, and anchor. And for design, you'll have fill color, border, and shadow. This is where you'll change elements background color. Changing these values works even if you upload your own SVG. It's pretty useful, especially when you have icons and perhaps you'd like to change their colors in different states, like on hover. So let's say we want to upload our own shape. We're going to need to access the media library. So we can find that under tools, media manager. This opens up a pop-up, which gives you access to their library of stock photography, Shutterstock and Onsplash. Let's go ahead and upload our SVG. You can drag and drop multiple files or choose individually. There's plenty of third-party integrations you can do too, like Dropbox or Google Drive. Connecting it is pretty simple, but for now, we'll just drop our local SVG. There we go. If we close this, we should be able to swap it out with the original shape we added. Let's go ahead and select the shape, click on Change Basic Shape on the menu above it, choose Side Files, Select the new image and add to page. And that's it. Pretty cool, right? To wrap this up, guys, Editor X gives you the possibility to add custom code. It opens up the doors for many opportunities, like I mentioned earlier. Think about it. You could create a role under settings and grant developers access to go crazy. Or maybe you become a badass programmer and tackle the basics of Velo. This is the JavaScript framework created by Wix. Don't worry, by the end of this course, you'll know how to defend yourself using a bit of Velo code. So how do we feel so far? Everything seems pretty intuitive, right? Let's dive in and learn about Editor X, libraries and masters. See you there.